Ah, new planet, new explosions, new genocide. I'm Libluini and you're killing everything. And yes, I'm dead. Ah, yes. In this part, I'm doing essentially the same as in the last video. I'm not only trying to destroy everything on this planet, I'm also trying again to get some extra weapons just to look how it works. And the, the, these flying enemies are new, I think, or I just couldn't see them in the wave of explosions uh, that was the last level. But I think if you destroy them, you get DNA in this level. I couldn't exactly test this because they tend to disappear if you die close to them. Also, DNA tur turns out it disappears too. At least a few times I was close enough to attempt to get it. But that's later. Later. Now, this part of the Let's Play of Amnios for the Amiga. I'm still trying my hardest to avo avoid anything, anything at all. I still have the bomb I got last level because I somehow forgot to use it. But as I remember, it was a bomb that's supposed to kill eyes with one hit. Which is kind of useless, considering that eyes are some of the more easier parts to destroy in Amnios. And again, at this level you will notice, last time I said, it looks the same as the, last, uh, as the third planet, but turns out I was wrong. The color scheme is similar, but you may have noticed, if you've seen the last video, we have a few new things to destroy and the organs we are flying above look different and we got a few more silly faces on the ground. And of course, we also die a lot. The amount of bullets that's flying at us in this level becomes really ridiculous at parts. And you remember? You have no invincibility frames, so if you get hit several times at once, then every single hit counts and you get drained to zero health in one hit. Yeah, if you see that thing here, that's this new, this silly giant head popping out of the ground. Also, this face is new with the giant eyes. I think there, there is even something looking like a mouth a bit deeper, but of course I'm stupid and fly into the other direction instead of trying to show it off. Then we have those things that look like levers. Apparently they are veins or pumps or blood pumps or something. And then we have thousand and one new little mouths which spit out bullets. And hidden being between all this mess are A's. And as you remember, uh, looking at the symbols at the right, above at the right, right edge of the screen, you have to destroy brains, brains and eyes, mostly. And if we kill enough of this shit, then the health, the heart, will also go down. And if it's down enough, then everything will turn red and the uh, Onko block will try to defeat us one last time with one giant bug like mutant. So let's see if it's the fourth planet is also defended by a giant bug at the end or if Psygnosis got a bit more creative with the end bosses this time. Also some Ah yes, another thing, more and more shit turns up that is actually invincible and shooting at it is just a waste of time. This giant mouth for example and the domes we know from earlier levels, shooting at them will just, well, 
well, after 10 or 20 hits you will notice nothing happening and as I t found out at the very beginning you can literally shoot all your points away without doing any damage to them. And again, we did the enemies in this level demonstrate when they touch, touch you thanks to no invincibility frames you get drained of health in less than a second and die. Ah, a lot of A's here. And remember, the longer the A's can look at us, the more the enemies concentrate on us. Which really doesn't help, seeing as I'm exploding again and again. And also important, try to take out those little squirty things on the ground first. So you can at least diminish the number of bullets coming at you. Can still do, do nothing about all those enemy snakes wanting to touch you. Can do nothing against spawning inside enemies, killing you again. And of course you can not do nothing against the control scheme which forces you to come to a dead stop to prevent just flying into stuff or shooting in the wrong direction. Also you may have noticed a lot of the shit you can see looks neat but can't actually be hit because it's just a background detail. Which is kind of funny considering that a lot of those background details are the stuff you're supposed to destroy. Also we got a bomb. Again, I think. Uh, ah yes, I haven't used it yet. Here are trying in vain to find out if th this mouth thing is something I should destroy. Then again, here's some kind of heart thing and some veins pumping blood. Oh, out. And I can at least destroy it. You know those weird round veiny things, but they of course are invincible. And something else, you may have noticed, sometimes you can just fly through things that are in the background and sometimes, especially if the if it's one of those weird little organic uh, point defense systems, yeah, let's call, it, call, call them that, then they drain your health like any enemy. And of course you will always be confused because sometimes it doesn't happen because apparently there are different rules for different um, point defense things. So this one for example is one I think which doesn't drain your health except of course if it hits you with bullets. Those blue giant things are, if I remember correctly, some kind of ingenious life form or something or another defense mechanism yeah it's kind of hard to tell what is what in this game especially since even the manual claims that some of the these uh, these life forms aren't part of the onco block they are just there apparently on 10 different planets and as you may see we have already four of those father ships now and good luck keeping track of them especially since ah yeah and i'm dead again so, real tall. The real problem I have with evading enemies is not the shitload of bullets coming from every direction. It's mostly because every time I try to e avoid something I have essentially two methods available to me. I can either try to turn my spaceship around and accelerate away from whatever is trying to hit me which takes a lot of time and doesn't always work because enemies tend to change direction at the most inopportune moment possible. So, and I'm dying before I can destroy the brain, but luckily one more hit did it. So where was I? Oh, those explosions draining my brain or something. I completely forgot what I was, what I was talking about a minute before. Sorry. Ah. Uh, Ah yes, I remember. Methods methods of avoidance. So method one, you can just turn your ship around and fly away, which takes a shitload of time and you get hit by everything. Liter literally everything. Then method 
2 is just well accelerating hoping you avoid more than you get hit. Both methods don't actually work because as I said uh, in one case you're just too slow and in the other case you're literally flying through everything you try to avoid. So in essence you're boned. Really. There are situa situations where I die about five times in less than a few seconds. Which me would mean, essentially, if I play this normally, it would mean instant game over. So, what I'm saying is, if you have for some reason an Amiga somewhere, or a version of the game with without this sheet code I'm, ha I'm using here, and if you try to play this honestly, then I can just say, well, good luck at first, and then... And I also have to say, you're goddamn crazy. I mean, you have seen the other videos, and uh, yeah, I promise you, it won't get any better, at least, at least not in this video. Here I'm trying to destroy everything a little bit. Those three parts I can destroy, but the rest is just background and for some reason not the kind of background that can wound you, so... Yeah, those blow things with ring, rings, remember, are the snatchers. Here I commit a grave error, which if you ever attempt to play this game for yourselves, you should never do. Saving humanoids. It may sound weird, but, but Psygnosis apparently really hates those humanoids. It's as if the programmers were forced to program them in, and they thought to themselves, well, let's just punish every player as we have been punished. Because literally, saving those little girls, I suppose, or women, is a death sentence. The manual doesn't actually tell you that the snatchers, the blue things guarding them, don't leave you alone if you s successfully save a humanoid. Instead, the snatcher that was guarding the humanoid will try to follow you. They will shoot at you, they will try to touch you, and since they are literally uh, larger than your own ship, they will kill you. They will kill you again and again and again. As you can see, even a single one is essentially a flying death machine, more dangerous than our own ship. Especially since that motherfucker is completely invincible, and we are not. And the problems start if you save more than one humanoid, and you have two, and then three. This level, I remember, we can f save up to four humanoids in our four father ships, which is already a giant clusterfuck since you have to transport every humanoid alone to one of the father ships, and the father ship can only take on one humanoid, which means that, yes, every time you save one, you have to make sure that you're not accidentally following a uh, father ship, which already carries one saved humanoid. And, of course, as soon as you actually save one of them, the snatcher of that humanoid will start following. So, this means this level up to four snatchers can follow me. And as you saw last level, as soon as you have more than one of those fuckers following you, you're essentially dying fast enough to go game over in about 10 seconds flat. So, in essence, if you ever play this without a cheat code, I suppose you could try it. I p remember, I am literally the worst player alive, so it is doable, I guess, just not by me. And, of course, you have to avoid humanoids, like the plague. Here I am trying again to save one of them, because I wanted to test if maybe the third level was just a fluke, and the snatchers started finally leaving me alone, like the manual promised. But no, I save a humanoid, then another humanoid, which doesn't work, because your hitbox can be kind of wonky. Which is kind of funny, when it's counting contact with enemy units and bullets, then your hitbox is surprisingly large. But if you try to collect something, 
left and either your own hitbox is the problem or the hitbox of humanoids and DNA is relatively small compared to their sprites. And now I have saved two humanoids and two snatchers are following me and they are touching me and drain me of health and spray bullets at me which kill me and of course since they are invincible they tank my bullets preventing me from hitting important things and something else I learned later on in the game turns out you can use your own weapon like some sort of deranged point defense yourself because some bullets at least can be destroyed by hitting them straight on. No, this is some other new fancy ID by Psygnosis which simply doesn't work in practice because may, you may have noticed all those mouths and snatchers and other enemies sending more than just a hand, little handful of bullets at you and all those little white things trying to destroy your ship well, there is just a really, really small path your own bullets fly, so trying to hit enemy bullets is practically, practically down to random chance and luck. And even if you destroy one of them, uh, because enemy bullets are, as you can see, not always traveling in a straight path and sometimes even coming from several direction at once and several after another. This essentially means that even if you by pure accident hit some bullets, that means that the other bullets coming be behind and before those, or coming from another angle, can still hit you and damage you. But the enemies on the other hand have just protected themselves by getting hit because you simply can't hit your fire button fast enough and your auto fire function isn't fast enough to put out enough bullets to get through a uh, good swarm of enemy bullets fast enough. So essentially what will happen if you try to use this, this mechanic to your advantage so you will sometimes hit a few bullets and then you will find out that the best case which will happen is one stray bullet averted. The worst case however will happen all the time which is you hit some bullets while trying to hit some enemy spray, spraying those bullets at you and all your hits will be hit those bullets and then you will drift uh, too close to the enemy and the enemy will drain you and you will die. Sometimes you get lucky and you touch an enemy practically in the last second after you killed him or just a split second before you will only release, lose a little bit of your health or nothing. And here finally I get another chance to try out our extra weapons bonuses. Of course I'm unlucky again because the second DNA string I test gives me some something called repulsion. Uh, really really short-lived version of the energy shield essentially it makes you invincible but it lasts not even as long as the shield and is quite useless considering most enemies can just kill you by touching you for about a second so something turning you invincible for a few seconds really doesn't matter much problem is of course the father ship which I have infected with this DNA strength will now continue to produce those things but because all of those father ships are careening wildly around the level and are hard to find if you want them to it's practical uh, zero chance I will ever get this again what I'm not trying anymore honestly is trying to get more DNA because then I would have two ships to follow trying to get the bonus produced by them and it would get really really silly at, the, at this point and remember we are st still on planet 4 out of 10 you can easily imagine what will happen if we try to get one specific extra weapon in the last level when we have to find our father ship among 10 also 
considering that two snatchers are already a menace which can easily double the time you spend in this level if you have an infinite life sheet. If you have not, then you'll just go game over and have to try again with a password. Really, this, the password system is the only saving grace this game has, because without passwords you would have practically zero chance to ever get farther than the beginning of level 2. I mean, I could see someone getting through one level if they really careful, run away from literally everything and never save something or never you try to use the crazy bonus weapon system and if they get really lucky with the boss, yeah, I could see this happen. Of course, you not only need ma literally magical powers to do this, you also need the patience of a saint. Both are things I do not have, so instead I have to cheat like a bastard. And really, it's quite frustrating because every time I actually do try to avoid something, literally everything hits me and I die again. And sometimes just to spite me, every tactic I try, it turns out worse. Thinking about a bit, this game really has the wrong control scheme. I mean, f think about it. You have to turn your ship around and then accelerate again to get anywhere. And if you're too fast, you have to actively brake or you just ram everything you want to avoid. And because you can cannot strafe, you can well you can kind of accidentally strafe by accelerating in one direction then turning your ship so that you're basically flying sideways while firing. But when you're doing this you will get slower until you come to a full stop. So it's not as practical as it sounds, especially since there is so much stuff needing multiple hits to die that you you sometimes really can't do this. Of course, if you then go ahead and save some humanoids, then you get killed again and again anyway, because invincible enemies don't care for triumph or avoidance and you can't even shoot them, and again, you're just bone. Here I have cut out several minutes of me just repeatedly dying while trying to destroy stuff and we'll... yes of course as soon as the boss turns up I'm dead immediately. Well at least we are close to the end of Planet 4 this time. So enjoy this fancy new bug. Or is it a giant flying face? Well it moves so fast it looks like a bug to me and it sprays lots of bullets and it's not as vulnerable to getting shot as the other bosses are. And that's it really. The tactic to beat it is still the same. You have to run away and you have to run away fast so that you not only avoid his giant body but also the bullets. And of course you have to try at least try to avoid all the stuff still on the ground occasionally shooting at you. And then and you're sure you're not immediately get hit by the giant bug, you have to fire in its general direction, hoping that it will drift in the direction you're firing. Of course, sometimes the enemies are a bit smarter than you are and change direction just at the last moment so that you, a lot of your shots will miss. And as you see, for some reason, the enemies are really touchy-feely. I think I have said this ten times already, but well, you're watching this right now, yes? Look at this. Sometimes the enemy even changes direction right after I respawn, so I fly through it again. Sometimes I respawn inside the enemy, in this case the giant boss. And as you have noticed, after I touched the boss last time, I tried to change direction, but I was dead before I even finished moving. Great. So. And of course the normal enemies are still all there. And again, I sp respawned inside the boss and I couldn't for the life of me get away before I was dead again. 
here again since I was so uh, since I finally learned that I'm simply too slow to turn around and accelerate away I tried to fly through the boss but the boss was large enough to still drain and kill me here again I try my best to get away but I dead respawn and dead again essentially this game this game it simply doesn't work the way it is together. The control scheme doesn't work together with the way the game works. The energy meter is completely irrelevant. It's useless since almost everything on the field can kill you by just touching you for a while. And again, if several bullets hit you at the same time, you're also instantly dead because every bullet gets counted. And here you see I can in less than a second, I think, even in less than half a second, all my health is gone. So essentially, the energy meter is just there to make you feel safer, but it really doesn't help you. It also doesn't help you because Psygnosis apparently balanced the game around your ability to survive several hits, which is kind of, well, stupid for the player because you well you've seen all those videos and how I die again and again and again well it could have worked if Psygnosis had programmed the enemies to try to not ram your face ram their faces directly t into your spaceship so you would have only to try to avoid accidentally touching them or have only to avoid their bullets but the way it is programmed, it's simply unplayable. If you play this the normal way, then, then you essentially dead the time you touch a boss or one other larger enemy. So, and this of course means that your lives are also practically meaningless. Because, as you seen in my fight with the boss, sometimes I die several times in a row simply because the game thinks it's funny to respawn me inside the boss. Oh, here's that. Well, onto the fifth planet and then I'm rambling some more. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ah, so, plants this time, huh? Ah, at least it's something fresh and new.